before OUM. Oracle had two different methodologies to address application implementation projects, AIM and AIM for business flows, or ABF, which was a more accelerated approach for implementation projects. The main difference were, first, at AIM, we had to build a current process model document which we did not have at ABF because that's a useless document after the project is completed. Second, at AIM, we have to define a future process model prior from showing the system to the final users and configure it. But at ABF, the system was used to map the future process model with the users along the CRPs, the conference room pilots. Which brings us to a third difference. AIM did not use CRPs, but ABF used them in an iterative approach. And fourth difference, deliverable names are much more known at AIM than at ABF. Or a unified methodology combines both methods, AIM and ABF, concerning deliverables, templates, documents, annotations, and adds a few ones. AIM had six different phases. First one is definition, where we determine the high-level business and information system requirements necessary to meet a set of defined business objectives. It is related to inception phase at OUM. Second phase at AIM is operational analysis. And the goal here is to understand the business requirements raised in the previous phase aligned with the system architecture to result in a clear definition of a project's functional scope. Third phase is solution design, and the goal here is to use the requirements created during operation analysis and finalize the system design and proposed application setups. Both operation analysis and solution design from AIN method are related to elaboration phase OUM, where we develop the detailed requirements, partitioning the solution, creating any necessary prototypes, and baseline the architecture of the system. Fourth phase at AIM is build, and as the name suggests, this is the phase where we actually build the solution by developing the codes for custom objects, the codes for conversion programs, execute all tests or course of the test scripts, prepare environments, and develop the cutover plan. Both solution design and build phase from AIM could be compared to construction phase at OUM due to the iterative approach at Oracle Unified Method. Fifth phase is transition, where we execute the cutover plan and go live. And it's associated with the transition phase at OUM as well. And sixth, and last phase is production, and the goal here is to monitor and confirm that the application is performed as expected, just like production phase at OUM. We also have 11 processes that are executed throughout those phases, which are, first, business process architecture, second, is business requirements definition, third, business requirements mapping. Fourth, application technical architecture. Fifth, module design and build. Data conversion. Documentation. Business system testing. Performance testing. Adoption and learning. And finally, production migration. If you want to understand in more details what those processes are all about, please watch the long version of this implementation video shown at the bottom of this page. AIM methodology, however, presents five phases and not six. It is just like OUM. First one is definition, which has precisely the same objective as OUM. We basically plan the project build the required assets, and conduct the CRP once, which objective is to map the future process model, the gap analysis, 
and define the application setups. Second phase is elaboration, where we set the application according to the business objective, according to the client needs, and design all the extension, conversion, and customization programs. CRP2 has all the setups meant for the client, but it has not the, it does not have the customizations. Third phase is build. So while at CRP the objective is merely to map the future process model, it has no setups meant for the client. And CRP2 objective is basically to test the final solution without the customizations. The objective at CRP3 is to test the integrated solution with all the interface, data conversion, and customizations. Transition phase is where we execute the cutover plan and go live. And production is where we maintain the system after the go live. So OUM use methods like AIM, AVF, and some templates which came from CDM, which is basically a system development method. And it uses notations which came from Scrum like user stories, UML, and flowcharts. We have in this video, in this slide, we can show all the process mapping between AIM and OUM. System testing is basically a one-to-one -one relationship, as well as data conversion, application technical architecture, documentation, performance testing, adoption, and learning, which is the training, are basically the same. The only difference are related to the names. But production migration is now split into two different processes. First is transition, which objective is to tran transition the system to the go-live and operations and support, which objective is mainly to support the system after the go-live. The real difference happens with the first process. They were business requirements definition, business process architecture, business process mapping, and module design and build meant for customizations are now split into six different processes. If you want to know in details those processes, I suggest you to watch a long version of this video. In this slide, you can see the main mapping of the main templates between OUN and AIM. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but you may just stop the video right here and write notes. So, as you can see, OUM is not only meant for implementation projects. It's meant for different types of project life cycles. It has over 300 tasks and documents, tasks using up to four templates, some others with no templates at all. We have redundant information, different templates using different notations, which means that you need to pick exactly what makes sense in your specific project. And that's why some templates are hard to use and bring low value. They are not well formatted. If you want to keep it simple and yet smart, I suggest you to understand and learn about Lean Apps method. If you want to understand more details of the process, phases, and documents mapping between OUM and AIM and OUM and ADF, check out the long version of this implementation video at the bottom of this page. Thank you for watching this video.